Um, let, let me turn to uh, Chao Yi then, please, next, and ask you, from where you sit, how do you see the pressures on the uh, current international economic order, and, and where do you think this is leading us? Okay. Before um, talking about new uh, economic uh, order, I guess we start to look at the uh, current or existing uh, international economic order from different uh, perspective. Uh, for example, we can look at uh, the power pattern, uh, which is a unipolar or multipolar. We can see the institution uh, uh, for current uh, international economic order, we have uh, we call Britain World uh, Institution, WTO, IMF, World Bank. Also, we can see law and regulation uh, objective, uh, which is global or domestic uh, priority. So, from this perspective, we can see current uh, order still there, but at the same time, we have already seen sign uh, of change or decoping uh, happen. Uh, uh, very interesting, according to uh, WTO, they find uh, in the IMF, IMF uh, annual report, uh, World Economic Outlook, they count the fragmentation, this word, mentioned 172 times in this version, this year, while five years fragmentation only mentioned once. That's very interesting phenomenon. Also, uh, we can see, uh, according to WTO, uh, they feel middle products uh, play a very important role in supply chain. But uh, you can see the share of mid uh, products among the total trade have already, uh, the share have already down from 51% uh, uh, average previous year down to 48.5% in first half of this year. So all this happened, I guess, uh, we can summarize two reasons. One is the internal fact in economic order, which I mean is the economic pattern or weight have already changed. Uh, as mentioned, people mentioned, in terms of PPP, uh, BRIC country share have already exceed uh, that of G7. Also, another factor is the external fact, like G geopolitical tension, a U.S.-China conflict, and a war. Uh, so after that, I can imagine or think uh, there are four possible scenarios for evolution of international economic order. Uh, first scenario, I will summarize as a business as usual. Uh, that means G7 with U.S. Uh, as a as its head, still dominant uh, uh, Britain world institution. Second scenario is uh, the economic order get some improvement, uh, but at the same time is some kind of backward, is I can call is a mixture. That's second scenario. <coughs> the third, third scenario is we can say is a uh, substantial new order uh, developing countries have a more uh, right to say in uh, Britain world uh, institutions. Uh, uh, in international law and uh, regulation are more equal to uh, new developing countries. The last scenario, fourth scenario, is uh, I can say is a totally disorder, is a totally fragmentation. Uh, uh, Maybe there's a, a parallel uh, group, uh, uh, group occur. For example, like US and the G7, vice China and the BRICS countries. Uh, that way, I guess the scenario 
uh, scenario second, scenario three are more likely happen. The scenario one and the scenario four less likely occur. But the last one, I don't totally not excluded, but it will be last if the world totally fragmented. Uh, uh, I just stop here. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, it, I think it's, so you framed quite nicely four scenarios, sort of two extreme ends, and then two in the middle, one's a bit better than the other, and, and the probabilities are we'll end up somewhere in the middle rather than at either end, but you don't want to exclude the, the worst case uh, from a fragmentation point of view. And I'd be interested to see whether the other panelists share that perspective in terms of whether the framing, but, but more importantly, where we are likely to end up.